Yo, it's actually nice weather here in South Bend. It's taking forever, basically half of the year to get any consistent warm weather here. So if you're, if you live in the Midwest or Indiana or anything like that, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's taking forever. But I do wanna say welcome to the channel. If you're new here, this is Cindy Dailies where I talk about the filmmaking process, show you my journey and show you behind the scenes of the different productions I'll be on. And this here is another Fujifilm video that I've done extensive content on the Fujifilm X-H2S to be more specific. So there is a playlist linked in the description. So make sure to check that out. But today we're gonna to be talking about my favorite X-mount lenses that I use to make content for this channel. I always show all the other lenses that I use, like my Ventus lenses, the DZO film, Vespit Prime, some other anamorphic lenses. I show all of that, but I never talk about the lenses that film me right now or do some of the B-roll stuff. So that's what we're gonna kind of dive into today. But before we jump into the lenses I wanna talk about, um, I wanna get this question often, I do get this question often, what VNDs or ND filters do I use? I've had the honor and privilege to work at Moment for a couple of years, but I've collected the uh, couple of different sizes of the Moment VND, which is this guy here. I know some you know, YouTubers advise buy one e VND and then kind of get step up rings. I kind of went the opposite route. I like having the exact filter for a specific filter thread. So I kind of just collected things over the years, like I just said. But yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, I do recommend these lens, uh, these filters. They're really clean. They don't shift the color. So yeah, that's what I use. Okay, it's really hot now. Okay, I know we're not talking about this specific camera exactly, the X-H2S, but I do have to appreciate how much latitude this camera has in F-Log2. Right now, it is pretty bright. Like, you're, seeing, you're probably seeing the correct exposure because I brought it down, but this is what it looks like coming out of the camera. Very high, it doesn't look like, it looks like it's clipping, but it's actually not. And once you just bring it back down, it's all even, it's all really nice. It's pretty, right? It looks good. So just shout out to Fujifilm for making F-Log 2. It's such a great vlog profile. And uh, this is, I'm just gushing over it. Okay, back to the video. So the first lens we're actually going to talk about is the lens that you're viewing this clip on now, which is the Viltrox 13mm f1.4. It is my go-to A-row and B-row lens for, I would say, 7% of the videos I make on YouTube now. Honestly, this focal length is great. It's like a 20mm equivalent on full frame. You get some nice separation. It's just a brilliant lens that I'm really happy about because it acts like a real native Fuji lens. Um, Whatever Viltrox did, they did a phenomenal job. Okay, I'm gonna talk about more about this lens, but I'm gonna show you what's behind this door because I have kind of a new studio space. All right, y'all, this is the, uh, the new shooting space for Cine Dailies. Uh, let me just kind of walk you through. Obviously, we're in my garage right now. And um, what's nice about this, grass, this house that we live in is that it has all these benches already built in this space. So it just took me a while to kind of collect the things that I've needed so I can actually use this um, as part of the shooting space. And it's gonna be great. Now I have a lot more room than that little room I was using downstairs. So let me just walk you over here. Obviously we have a fridge still, but this is going to be the battery setup space. So I gotta finish pulling some things together at a light here, but obviously I have all my V-mount batteries, um, all these little charging cables here for lights and other knickknacks and whatnot, V-mount charger. On this side, I don't know what I'm gonna use this exactly for, but um, probably just to build rigs again, because I have, uh, you know, my CRD bags here um, with certain labels that I can actually just grab and go. I do have my mat, my mat here and some tools. Um, so I'm trying to figure out maybe that's going to be for some builds and stuff. Here I brought up my backdrop so I can use this for the A-roll. Either I can shoot in the corner like this or be direct. Obviously there's some framing I need to do and blocking because I got all this junk up here. And then over here is probably my favorite spot right now. Is this elongated uh, workbench where I've built a few things. But I'm at, probably mainly use this for B-roll. I really like this angle. And when I have a nice lens, obviously this is too wide, but a nice lens that has some compression and whatnot, I get some nice background blur back there, bulk and everything. But um, really like this spot, but this is what it is. This is what I'm working with. 
I still have my space downstairs. I can still do some shots in there, but this is where I'm going to primarily be in. Um, obviously, got security cameras and whatnot, locks. So I'm pretty good, and nobody else knows where I live except for my friends. But <laughs> not too worried. But this is this is it, and I'm pretty pretty excited for it. Now this has quickly become my workhorse lens for A roll, B roll, uh, product photography, anything and everything in between. And what's really great about it too is that the way that Viltrox built this, I don't know how they did it, like I said earlier, but the AF in this is super quiet, it's super responsive. And the fact that it's being driven by the X-H2S which has really good autofocus already. So the combination of the two has just been flawless for my use case. The smooth focus throw is actually surprising when I pull focus when I'm not using autofocus. It feels premium, but it's not a cinema lens focus throw, but uh, it doesn't feel cheap either. Now going back to the autofocus of this lens, um, some of my settings that I use for this camera are here, and I actually made a video about this too. I should make a part two, but at this point it's probably outdated. But these are my settings. I keep the tracking sensitivity to zero and then the tracking speed to negative three. And this gives me a nice gradual tracking as I move back and forth from the camera. So I really like how that combination works. Now, when it comes to the image quality of this lens, um, it's fairly neutral. It's a little bit more on the cooler side. So when it comes to flaring and such, it does lower the contrast quite a bit. As you kind of see, it feels a little bit lower. But overall, this has been my favorite lens to use when it comes to vlogging, content creation, A-roll, everything I've been just repeating over and over. This is the lens I would highly recommend if uh, you are using your Fujifilm cameras for this because this lens rocks. Okay, so now this guy, the Fujinon FX 16 to 55, which is the 24 to 70 equivalent. This is absolutely a workhorse lens, as you notice, I'm going to say a lot. But this has been um, something that I didn't think I needed. We bought this lens because my wife and I both use X-H2S's, and we wanted a lens that was good for video for, for the most part, if I needed a little bit more zooming or a little bit more flexibility but then for photography as well. So this has been a great lens to have in our kit. Um, obviously this is probably the most pristine lens. The motors are really quiet. Uh, it has a linear motor system. Um, it's weather resistant. Uh, what else out there? <laughs> um, the range is pretty good against 16 to 55. Now yeah, it's a much bigger, heavier lens, but when people complain about the weight of this lens, I find it pretty silly because it's not, it's not a heavy lens compared to what else is out there. And plus I use cinema glass lenses anyway. So this is pretty much plastic compared to this thing here. The image quality out here compared to the Viltrox, uh, this handles contrast way better. This doesn't flare as much, obviously, because it is built to be a stills lens. Um, some things I just don't like because it is a stills lens is this, you know, uh, silly focus by wire. It just feels very cheap compared to the Viltrox. Honestly, if Fujifilm updated this lens to maybe a 1.8, like another quote unquote legendary lens that's out there, the 16 to 18, 16 to 35 from Sigma, which is a 1.8, this would be a much more appealing lens. I think I would probably use it a lot more as well. And uh, that's probably just my only knock. If Fujifilm started making their FX lenses more towards the video side like Panasonic did, that would be a great direction. Now I do like the FX Prime lenses, the 18, the 23, and the 33. Those are fantastic lenses, pretty much the same style as the 13 mil. And um, those I think are a lot better for video anyway, but this zoom is very useful when I, when I just need to take one lens with me and kind of just carry it with me. Um, but an update would not be a bad thing, Fuji, so. Now, I know I've been talking about autofocus lenses these last two, but this is pretty much the wild card in my kit, and I've really enjoyed this lens. Uh, this is the 7 Artisans 35mm. I know they have a couple of different ones. This is one I picked up on Amazon for $139. This thing is a sleeper lens. The main big feature on it is a 1.2 aperture. So this is what, I said 35, so this is a 50 equivalent. And this has become, again, a favorite lens to have in my kit for unique B-roll shots that have a little bit more character because this definitely does, um, as well as product photography because it gives me that nice compression and stuff like that. So this has been a joy to use. Now, I know I could pick up eventually a, you know, 33 mil 
FX lens from Fuji or to go completely Viltrox. I still don't know what I'm gonna do with that. It would be nice to have a autofocus lens. Um, this is just manual, like I just said, but the, the focusing is really simple. Though it's a little small, it's, you know, it's just like a quick one, two, one, two. So you don't have to hunt or have a, a very long throw when it comes to focusing with this. So now when it comes to the character of this lens, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's a very soft texture when it's wide open, but it has this nice crisp feeling to the center of the image. And it's just, this is a beautiful lens. It's such a sleeper lens. I had no idea that um, I would expect this type of quality coming out of it. Now, obviously it's not perfect. It is a little bit, you know, soft on all fronts, but soft is not bad, <laughs> depending what do you want to use a soft image for. Um, but stopping down to f2, which is kind of like the sweet spot, is um, what was well, the sweet spot for me. It's what I like, but it holds contrast fairly well. Um, it doesn't have a lot of chromatic aberration, which was very surprising to see since it's such a cheap lens. Um, it handles contrast very well. I mean, it's just the image is really nice. I like using this focal length and that aperture in open gate with this camera, and it's just absolutely creamy, beautiful. It's just, you can't, you can't go wrong with it. It's just absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, there you have it. There's my list of lenses. This is a short one, but I mean, that's all really what I need. I need a lens that I can use for my A-roll stuff and then a couple of lenses for different types of B-roll and I'm fairly happy with them. So let me know in the comments below what lenses are you using to make content with and I'll catch you guys on the next video. I got to finish cleaning this space because there's a lot of more organization to do. Cool. All right, see y'all.